Hello there. Today's book is uh, the book by Ed Morales, which I really look forward to buying. It came out uh, not that long ago, and uh, it's the FBI Miami firefight, um, the gunfight that changed the FBI. Um, there have been other books written about this, and there was actually a movie, TV movie made with starring David Soul, which was rubbish. Um, but this is the first inside um, look from one of the agents at what happened back in 1986. Uh, Ed Morales gives his background. He, he served in the U.S. Marines and he also gives the background to the whole incident, which was two guys, platomatics, who were armed robbers, uh, high level armed robbers, robbing banks and armored cars. But they were also going out into the Everglades and shooting um, guys who were recreationally shooting out there in swamps and quarries and stealing their firearms. And um, one, one guy actually, <clears throat> despite being severely shot, survived and was able to ID them. And that's one of the ways the police got onto them. They were absolutely ruthless. So the FBI, <clears throat> excuse me, the FBI's Miami office uh, put together a team under uh, Gordon McNeil to uh, investigate the robberies being a federal crime. And uh, they decided to do a rolling stakeout on the uh, South Dixie Highway in Miami um, to saturate the area and to kind of um, see what the, the, they could uh, find happening by chance. Um, so they started the stakeout and uh, they were in various cars. And um, in the, what usually happens is these things last for a long time with no result. So I believe the agents were kind of resigned to here we go again. You know, we'll be cruising up and down this highway on the off chance of seeing something. Um, and it's not going to happen. But lo and behold, really early on, within minutes really, um, they came across the target vehicle, uh, a black Monte Carlo NTJ891, and um, got behind it. And uh, rather alarmingly um, saw that these guys were um, manipulating long guns in the car. So... Uh, the decision was made to um, perform a felony roadblock. And this is where it all went wrong. And they waited for a suitable um, area to do it in where there wasn't too much uh, foot traffic and then uh, intercepted, did a vehicle interception, uh, which was basically ramming. But um, the um, FBI vehicles also lost control and it, it all ended up um, sort of in a really big mess of uh, of cars and agents and there was a subsequent gunfight and um, two agents were killed and uh, there was only one who wasn't wounded out of the eight the rest were wounded so uh, it, it was a really bad day for the FBI and the book uh, goes into quite a lot of the uh, lessons learned from the, um, the, the firefight. Now, the FBI um, did a, a reconstruction on a film that was called Firefight, and I've got a copy of it, and I used to use it on courses, and we used to sort of discuss lessons learned and so on. Um, so it was a really good training tool. A um, couple of the lessons learned was right off the uh, felony car stop um, probably would have been better to do what's usually now known as a hard stop um, but to, to be fair they were blown by the, the bandits that they knew they were being followed so it might have been hard to do that um, another point was a couple of the agents had taken their pistols and were sitting on them uh, which was quite a common practice. But there were lessons from Northern Ireland and from Rhodesia. And I put it in an article about carjack on, on the forum. 
where that if you, you uh, have a collision or uh, an explosive ambush or anything like that, then you're very likely to lose your pistol. And the, the rule is, if you're going to do that, have two weapons. Have one on your belt and one in the car. Have a separate car gun. So you, if you need to access it quickly, you can do that. But in the event of um, a collision, you, you've still got a weapon on your body when you bail out of the car. So that was another lesson. Uh, another lesson was I, eyesight. One of the most experienced shooters on the team, Ben Grogan, who was a SWAT team member, um, had to wear spectacles. And in the collision, his spectacles fell off and he couldn't see. And his um, kind of last words were, where is everybody, as he went down. Uh, and, you know, a simple um, octopus band on the, on the spectacles to secure them uh, would have helped. Gordon McNeil also only had the sight in one eye. And then um, during the incident, he turned and he turned to his blind side and didn't see the threat and got shot. But one of the things about Gordon McNeil is he was shot with a two twenty three round, which transversed his uh, upper torso. But he was a powerlifter and he had um, he was quite muscular, and the bullet was stopped by his muscles, and um, so he wasn't paralysed or killed. And if that happened to a friend of mine who was stabbed, and he was a bodybuilder and he had uh, good muscle mass, and the blade didn't penetrate as much as it. It should have done. So there are cases where um, muscle mass can save your life. Um, quite a few of the agents um, were hit. Uh, Ed Morales, basically his arm was turned inside, his left arm was turned inside out. He had a shotgun and uh, as he brought the shotgun up, he, he was shot. And the, the uh, arm took the round that would have gone into his torso. Um, so the issue of um, wounded officer technique comes into it and Ed Morales had to learn how to function a shotgun, a uh, pump action shotgun one handed and fire it uh, while in a gunfight. He'd never been taught how to do it. And I, I believe if he'd gone to the firearms instructors and said, I want to learn how to do this, they would have looked at him askance. And told him to get real um you know there's institutional bureaucracy stopped kind of anything unorthodox uh, later on wounded operator drills became very very normal uh, another issue is body armor um they had body armor but it was usually on the back seat or in the trunk they hadn't bothered putting it on it's miami it's warm but they're in air-conditioned vehicles, so there wasn't any real excuse. Um, it kind of is a bit of a difference between FBI and um, city street cops in, in the kind of perception of what's going to happen. You know, quite a few guys who work homicide and so on have um, debriefed the FBI uh, Miami incident and um, they are of the opinion that it could have been handled better. Having said that, the guys themselves, um, for the most part, were um, tried to stay in the fight as much as possible. Um, Ed Morales was kind of the hero of it. He um, pushed the fight and uh, ended up uh, killing the bad guys. Uh, there's another book that I've read by the medical examiner, and it's got the autopsy photos in, and... Uh, when you see the rounds and the, the wounds that the two bad guys took, um, Platt was shot in his feet with um, double or buck from a shotgun. Now, I can't imagine being able to stand after that, but um, nothing uh, seemed to phase him at all. You know, he, he famously took um, a Winchester silver tip 9mm, which uh, was, according to the medical examiners, um, non-survivable he, he was dying um, but it wasn't dying quick enough and they were two bad guys who were aggressive uh, practiced with the firearms a lot you know they tracked down later their ammunition purchases and how much they'd stolen and these guys were out training a lot uh, they had clear tox screens 
So it was all done on adrenaline. They weren't full of drugs. Um, they were just two determined bad guys. In fact, it was mainly Platt. Mattox was out of the fight fairly early on. Uh, there was a suggestion that his ears, his eardrums burst from the overpressures of, of um, having a, a Ruger Mini 14 fired past him in a, within a vehicle. Um, I haven't had that confirmed. There were some interesting um, things came out of it. Um, the responding officers were faced with uh, the size of a large Hispanic male um, firing a revolver into an FBI car because the bad guys had gone into one of the FBI cars to escape, which had the flashing lights on the roof. So on the face of it, the bad guy was shooting at agents. And for some reason, the responding officers didn't shoot him. There was a kind of intuitive feel that no this is there's more to this than meets the eye um i went to a presentation uh at a training conference that ed morales gave and uh, very honest um and uh, that was a few years ago and it's great to see him put it all in a book as well uh, he at the time of his lecture he was carrying a sig nine millimeter and five magazines as i recall so uh in miami most of the agents had revolvers only the guys who were on the swat team were the um ben grogan who died jerry Dove, dove who died and ron reisner who was the only one who wasn't wounded all had um smith uh, semi-autos uh, the rest all had revolvers of one sort or another um really interesting book uh it's always sad that um, innovations in tactics and training and equipment and so come at the expense of uh, uh, law enforcement officers' lives. That was the case in Miami. But um, the book is certainly well worth reading and uh, I recommend it to anyone.